what next? I actually took my son um, to the Natural History Museum in London and we went around various different exhibits, most of them around dinosaurs and insects, but I also came across this, which just had some, some recent data around how much land we use, right? What land are we using on the planet? And when you actually look at it and realize how small cities and livable locations are to, um, to the planet and yet how much we use on farming animals that I've actually always struggled with in, um, in the world of plant-based is what is it, right? It kind of started out as, a, as the meat substitute category, right? Um, maybe dairy substitutes as well. And that was called plant-based. And then that term has grown and grown. We had the vegan trend that became the plant-based trend that's growing and growing. But what is it? Is it about alternatives to animal-derived things? Or is it in pro products with these plant-based superfood ingredients like your kombuchas and your, your, your cereals with super grains and whatever it might be? Is it about cannabis cookies? You know, does that qualify as a plant-based product? But can conventional meat that exists now produce enough meat especially in a sustainable way to feed the global population. Probably not. It's going to be a combined effort. So when we look at some of the data we're seeing from the UN, from World Economic Forum, as we can see on screen, once we get to 2040, what they're reporting is that things like cultured meat, vegan meat or plant-based meat are going to make a huge um, proportion. Um, in fact, more than half of the, the, uh, the of protein that will feed the population. So 25% of that future growth, of that uh, future share of meat will be from vegan options or plant-based options like today. We have a whole ho other presentation on cultivated, which we can get into another time, but it just gives you a picture of why plant-based is still going to have a massive role to play in another um, you know, 15 to 20 years time.